So the Coleman Center started as an arts club in like 1984, I think. And so it was local artists that were showing their own work. By the mid 2000s, there was kind of a ideological change within the organization that was facilitated by two of my predecessors. And now we have like five main programmatic areas. We have our um, artist residency, which is like our best known program outside of the state. We have exhibitions. We have uh, art education, um, a community garden, and Popstart, which is um, a space we use now for like our screening series, a lot of like public programs, workshops, classes, things like that. We are located in downtown York. We have seven buildings. Um, with a variety of uses. Our most popular and best known is the one we share with the library and it also has our gallery. You know, I was an artist in Alabama. You know, organizations like the Coleman Center and um, also the Birmingham Museum of Art were like pretty critical to my development. I went to high school at Alabama School of Fine Arts. I graduated from there. Uh, and after high school and college, I moved back to Birmingham and um, pretty quickly started working for the Birmingham Museum of Art. I worked in the education department. And while I was there, uh, it became clear, I, I loved working in museums. I loved like working as like an art worker versus being a maker myself. And so I went to grad school in the Bay Area at California College of the Arts. I had heard of the Coleman Center and visited uh, probably back in like 2006, 2007. I just thought it was a neat organization. You know, like uh, the Coleman Center is really filling a gap. There isn't an excessive amount of opportunity for artists who are working outside the state to kind of be in practice in the state, you know. And when I was coming back, my dad said this really lovely thing. He was like, yeah, maybe you're like the Coleman Center is going to help the next Jacob Lawrence develop. And I was just like, oh. Also, it's just a beautiful idea that like we are here to kind of cultivate other folks' creative practice. York was a much larger town. You know, it was at least triple the size it is now. And uh, it had a public park that had a swimming pool. And in 1971, I believe, um, as there was forced desegregation. In this case, it's like pretty profound because we're talking about the majority of the community was um, denied access to lots of public space. Uh, but city leadership at the time filled in the swimming pool rather than desegregate it. And um, you could and still can see the kind of like footprint of the building and the swimming pool space. And then um, a visiting artist decided to kind of um, unpack what it means for the, like, the vestiges of that to still remain with uh, a diving board um, bench. You know, uh, he, he imagines it as something like that people will sit at. Um, and so it's one of the earlier projects I was familiar with. And I thought it did a lot of different things. Like aesthetically, it was doing some things. It was um, the materials he chose I thought were pretty sophisticated and interesting. And then um, the site was, was pretty relevant and um, impactful. We are here on our campus, the Coleman Center for the Art Campus. And we're at our picnic tables that were the culmination of a project with an arts, artist collective, Fallen Fruit. They're based in Los Angeles. They do a lot of fruit and food justice related projects. And these tables are one of the projects and kind of the culmination of multiple visits. The project was multi-stage. You know, it uh, included a kind of cobbler potluck where folks from throughout the community brought different fruit cobblers. It also included a jam making uh, tutorial. Um, it included planting fruit trees and uh, doing kind of foraging for fruit locally. And um, at, at those events, they had some oral history and storytelling that, that then was placed on, um, inscribed on the picnic tables. Like Fallen Fruit says, every body has a fruit story and these tables have a fruit story. Now the space is used, uh, it's like a quiet meditative space, um, it's well, it has a nice canopy here, so people enjoy sitting and 
what is relatively cool and um, reading the quotes. So uh, the Coleman Center has been around a long time and because of that we've had you know, multiple phases. And I really want the Coleman Center to, again, be able to support folks in practice and like many people in practice and be kind of a meeting space for community and people in creative practice, you know, to have very robust programs. I do really believe in the importance of, um, I don't know if visual literacy is exactly the right term, but you know, like people who don't sing well still enjoy music and engage with music. If you're not a formally trained dancer you still dance and move but there's something about like how v visual arts has been like relegated and it's like to to be able to buy objects is for the wealthy and to be able to do it as an expression is for the highly skilled and um i don't want that you know i want people to feel a lot of ownership over what they make and then also like what they see and how they create their environment and you know that excites me